Hey everyone. Now this weekend I went to buy some comic supplies, but I also ended up buying some books. Now there are 15 of them, so I'm not going to give a brief description of each book. First up is Avengers number one. Invincible Iron Man number one. Batman number 14. Super Roll number 5. Spider Man number 11. Spider Man number 15. We number 12, excuse me, number 12. Silk number 16. Indicated myself there. Um, Titans number 6. Justice League vs. Suicide Squad number 2. Justice League vs. Suicide Squad number 3. Justice League vs. Suicide Squad number 4. Justice League vs. Justice League number 12. Not Justice League vs. Suicide Squad. Justice League number 12. Spider Gwen number 11. Spider Gwen number 14. And finally, Spider Gwen number 15. Now, with those 15 books I bought, that brings the total number of comics that I bought since December of 1997 to 7,695. Show. Go. Welcome to this week's edition of the Comic Hero Show. I'm your host, Victor Nunley, and I am the Comic Hero. Coming to you for Clint's Comics right here in Monroe, Louisiana. And, um, it's 140th ep 148th episode, I mean. And I'm two episodes away from the Milestone 150th episode. And next week, episode 149, will be the 50th episode that I've done here at Clint's since Claire and Bobby took over. Yeah. Since since Claire took since over. Since Claire and Will took over. <laughs> since Claire, Will, and I took over. Um, and uh, and and um, after you've been watching that the, the beginning of this, I and not counting the books I'm going to I'm going to be buying later on in this episode, I am three hundred five away from the historical, or should I say landmark, 8,000 comics. Yeah, Will and I were just talking we're, we're just talking about that earlier, and you, you know what? Um, a lot of folks ask me, how do you have that many comics in your collection? Have you ever thought about uh, getting rid of them? No. Does Colin Cowherd know how to be nice? There's your answer. All right. Let's give away a free t-shirt. All right, um, last week's episode, I asked, what major US city is the base of operations of the Marvel Universe? The correct answer, New York City. And 10 ah, people man. have answered correctly. And because they've answered correctly, their names have been entered in a drawing for a free tee. And that takes place right now. So, the winner of the free tee for this week's episode is...
Michelle Bryant from Blanchett, Louisiana. Some congratulations, Michelle. You win yourself a free Comic Hero tea. All right, now here's the question for a free tea for next week's episode. What is Supergirl's Kryptonian birth name? Easy, huh? All right, everyone who answers correctly will be entered a drawing for a free tea in next week's episode. Now, Mitch Wyatt from Bastrop, Louisiana has requested a Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown fight, and it features two characters that I have never heard of until a few days ago. And I, I asked him, who in the heck are these people? And he told me, and then when I found out who they were and what their power sets were, I was like, oh, this ought to be very good. Representing Valiant, we had Toya Harada. Toyo Harada, excuse me. And representing Marvel, we have Alfie Omegan. These two are going to duke it out in a segment I like to call... The, the Comic, Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown. Welcome to the Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown. Today, it's Toya Harada versus Alfie Omegan. Toya Harada is an Omega Harbinger and commands the full spectrum of psionic abilities, telepathy, telekinesis, and mind control, just to name a few. Alfie Omegan can manipulate matter, including his own body, at an atomic level and can effectively warp reality. He can fly, teleport himself and others, cure disease, heal injuries, alter the weather, fire energy beams, survive indefinitely in outer space, and grow up to 3,000 miles tall. He's also a telepath who has a photographic memory, can create illusions, and is clairvoyant in time and space. He can split his consciousness into thousands of pieces, each acting independently, though the more pieces, the greater concentration needed, and the weaker each part is. Who will win? One thing's for sure, nothing will be the same when this fight is over. Omegan quickly learns that Harada has control over all psionics, so he reluctantly declines on using his telepathy. He relies on flight and laser manipulation, but Harada stops Omegan in his tracks. Harada then telepathically tells Omegan to leave the planet, in which he does. Toyo Harada wins. But wait! Remember when I said that Omega can survive in space? Well, he snaps out of it and immediately makes his way back into the fight. To avoid being burnt to death via re-entry, Omegan grows up to 200 miles tall and attempts to stomp on Harada. Harada, avoiding death, disintegrates Omegan via telekinesis. Instead of dying, Omegan, now inadvertently split in pieces, enters Harada's ear canal and lobotomizes him in the brain. Alfie Omegan wins. And that concludes this fight on the Comic, Comic Hero, Hero Throwdown Showdown. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that fight. And if you have a, a Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown fight for future episodes, contact info is down there. All right, let's get to the comics I bought this week. Comic books I bought this week. <laughs> All right, first up is the Mighty Captain Marvel number one. Now, I'm really excited about this because this is the next chapter in the life of uh, Carol Danvers, a.k.a. Captain Marvel. Well, and, and, you know, she's one of my favorite Marvel characters and has been for some time, you know, dating back to her days as Ms. Marvel and Warbird. And I can't wait to read this. All right, next up is Superman number 15. This is um, part two of Multiplicity, where all the Superman from the DC multiverse have, have vanished, and it's up to the pre-Flashpoint Superman to save them all. And I still haven't read number 14, which is part one, but I'll get to it and... I'll let you know what happens in a future episode. All right, next up is Justice League versus Suicide Squad number five. Now, I've only read number one, but what I can tell you is that the league has found out about the super about the excuse me the Suicide Squad rather, and it's up to it's up to them to stop. But then while they're fighting them, they find out that that there's another another threat that's on his way and one of the members is Max Lord and we all know what he did in the pre-Flashpoint DC Universe so yeah as Bubba Sparks uh, uh, once said 
it's gonna get ugly in here, up in here, up in here. All right, next up are four issues of the same book, and that book is Spider Gwen. And we get them some kind of order here. And I have Spider Gwen number nine. Spider Gwen number ten. Spider Gwen number eleven. And Spider Gwen number fourteen. Now, the last issue that I read of Spider Gwen was uh, during the Spider Women story arc, where um, the um, the Jesse Drew of the Marvel Universe has, has pretty much decided to take it upon himself to uh, to kick some butt, along with the um, the Silk from the uh, from. Well, this Je this Jesse Drew is from the same Marvel Universe as Spider Gwen, as well as the um, the Silk from from, um, from the same Marvel Universe as Spider Gwen. They both both teamed up and decided to uh, to wreak havoc and make lives miserable for Spider Gwen, Spider Woman, and Silk. All right, next up is the clone is Dead No More: The Clone Conspiracy Number Four. Words cannot describe how awesome this book is. Now, we find out that the new Jackal, whose identity I'm about to reveal in, in a few minutes, has teamed up with some uh, with, with some organization called um, New You, where they where they have pretty much instead of cloning people, they bring people to life. Only that they have to take this pill once a day in order for in order for them to stay alive. And Spider-Man is having none of it. But then meanwhile, the Scarlet Spider, aka Kane, has um, has teamed up with, with Spider Gwen and they're try and they're trying to um, take care of stuff on their end. And now at this point Spider-Man doesn't know anything about it. Um, and J. Jonah Jameson's in on it too. His re recently revived wife, Marla Jameson, has um, has pretty much uh, talked him into it, uh, uh, teaming up with the Jackal, and the, the Jackal even in, even offered to bring back his recently deceased father, John Jameson Sr. Um, and then if that wasn't enough, we find out who the, new, the identity of Jackal is. Ben Riley. That's right. That is the. Um, the first Scarlet Squad, the Scarlet Spider, rather, he's revived, and he says, "If you team up with me, we can bring back Uncle Ben." Now, and then, oh, oh, by the way, Scarlet Spider and uh, Spider Gwen find out that in every Marvel universe that they have that they have been in, Peter Parker has teamed up to agree with New You. Which bring which thus bringing the end of the world, or the end of every of every Marvel universe that's that, that's existed, and with with Ben Riley showing up out of nowhere, revealing himself as the that's the new Jackal, I can see why. All right, next up is um, Spider Gwen number sixteen. This is part two of Sitting in a Tree. Now this is a crossover event with with the. Uh, with, with the Miles Morales Spider-Man book. And, um, yeah, you could probably guess what the story are being called, uh, sitting in a tree. Yeah, they're in a relationship with each other. It's crazy kids. All right, next up is Invincible Iron Man number three. Now, I, I've, now as y'all um, just found out earlier, I bought the first issue of Invincible Iron Man number one over at Excalibur Comics this past weekend. And, I, and because I just bought it, I haven't been able to um, get started with it. And, and folks, just charge it to my head, not to my heart. I read a lot of books. And then on top of that, I have a very demanding job. And, and a lot of times it, it, it doesn't, you know, I, I, keep, I keep saying this all the time. But a lot of times I can't get, it's, it's kind of hard for me to get caught up with books. But I promise I will, I will read this in due time, and I'll let you know what happens in a future episode. All right, next up is Amazing Spider-Man number 23. Now, this is a tie-in to the clone conspiracy 
And this is pretty much a cutting room floor to uh, a lot of a lot of issues that I mean a, a lot in terms of of the uh, mini series. And and I guess in this one we we find out more about the Gwen Stacy clone. And that's right, folks. Gwen Stacy was cloned, and, and um, Ben Riley pretty much just did that to mess with Spider-Man's head. All right, that's 11 I bought, which brings the total number of comics that I bought since December of 1997 to 7,706. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And here's the question again for a free tea for next week's episode. What is Supergirl's Kryptonian birth name? Everyone who answers correctly will be entered in the drawing for a free tea in next week's episode. And congratulations to Michelle Bryant from Blanchard, Louisiana, who won a free tea in this week's episode. Oh, um, and, a, and happy birthday to two folks from my hometown whose first names are Dana. Uh, happy birthday to um, Dana Nicholson. And happy birthday to Dana Hudson. And, and also congratulations to Rachel Robinson over at Bayou Dental. She just got accepted into the LSU Dental School. So congratulations, Rachel, and much success to you. And hopefully um, you'll be referred to as Rachel Robinson DDS. And um, in about a few weeks, as a matter of fact, two weeks from Saturday, I will be doing a Comic Hero Show Extra at the all-new location of Excalibur Comics Cards and Games in Shreveport, Louisiana. I, I just um, I just talked to, to the guys that run the place. They said, come on. So if you're in the Shreveport area, come on out. And I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to start doing it somewhere around uh, maybe 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And um, this episode, I'm going to be, after this episode, I'm only get I'm two away from the 150th episode. And with those comics that I just bought, I am 296, well, 294 away from 8,000 comics. And um, you know what? I've read some good comics. I read some bad ones. But do I regret um, buying one book? Does Ann Coulter know how to not uh, insult people? There's your answer. All right. Um, but yeah. Anyway, I'm Victor Nully. I'm the Comic Hero. I'll see you next week for episode 149 right back here at Clint's Comics. So till then, be safe, be blessed, be a hero. mistake and this week I made one now I had forgotten that I bought um, spider Gwen number 11 at Excalibur comics this Sunday and what I did was yesterday I ended up buying spider Gwen number 11 over at Clint's. Um 
Last night when I was uh, sorting them out, I saw two copies of Spider Gwen, number 11. So I told Claire about it, and she said, just bring it back and swap out for another one. And that's exactly what I did. I swapped that out for Infamous Iron Man number 3. So with that being said, the count is now truly at 7,706. Now, right after I left, um, I left Clint's, I went over to Books A Million, and because I have Infamous Iron Man number three, and I have Infamous Iron Man number one, and you know what? I just figured, okay, let's look for number two. And I did just that. There's Infamous Iron Man number two, and then I bought two more. I bought The Flash number 13, and Teen Titans number three. So since I bought those books, now the count is at 7,709. Alright, that's all I have. See y'all next week for episode number 149. Till then, enjoy the blooper reel. Hey everyone, now this past weekend I went to buy some comic supplies, but I wound up buy, um, buying a few... <laughs> Alright, well I hope you enjoy the Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown, and if you have a showdown... Oh my gosh! <laughs>